we have the kalima, which is a word in Arabic. Then we have its three types, ism, fi'l, and hauf. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over the qualities of each and every single one of these. Now, a lot of people, they start off talking about the ism, but I'm actually going to start off talking about the harf. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why um, in a minute. Okay, so our harf is, again, the particle. The only thing that you need to know about the particle is that it does not convey meaning on its own. Meaning that it's independent. So, for example, in English, if someone was to ask you, how are you going to climb the mountain? Now, if all you say when they ask you this question is with, then they're not going to understand a word that you're saying. Why? Because with is a particle. It's a preposition. It doesn't mean anything by itself. Well, similarly, in Arabic, uh, particles like B or Li, which means for, and B, which means with, these particles, they do not have meaning by themselves. Okay, They do not convey any type of idea just by themselves. And it will come in handy later when we get to it. But just remember that for now. Next, we have the fi'l. And the fi'l is our verb. Okay? The fi'lun is our verb. Now the first thing that you need to know about the fi'l is that it does convey meaning on its own as opposed to the harf. And secondly, what you need to know is that it has a tense, meaning past, present, and future. So for example, we have the verb Nasara. Now Nasara in Arabic, it means he helped. I'll even transliterate it for you. Nasara. Yep. He helped. Now because of this ED in English, we know that it's a past tense verb. In the same way, based on how this verb looks, we know that it is a past tense verb. Now we're going to get into the details of how to tell that it's past tense later. But for now, just know that verbs hold a tense. Also, they convey meaning on their own. So, for example, if someone were to ask you, who helped, it'd be enough for you to point and say, Nasara, he helped. And that's how the, the fi'l, it conveys meaning by itself as opposed to the harf. Next, we have what we call the ism. And the ism in English is known as the noun. The first thing you need to know about the ism is that it has no tense. It does not have a tense. And this is obvious if you've studied a noun before. And secondly, as opposed to the harf as well, it conveys meaning on its own. And so, for example, we have the word Rajulun. And Rajulun in Arabic means man. And as soon as I say man, a picture of a man comes into your mind. So this word, it conveys meaning on its own. And at the same time, saying man does not tell me whether it's a past, a man in the past, or a man in the present, or a man in the future. Okay, and so that, that means that this is a noun because not only does it convey meaning by itself, 
but it holds no tense. And that's it for today. So